Please live simply. So we live simply. Please live simply. Please live simply. So we may simply live. Mr. Sunam Wongchuk is an engineer, environmentalist, innovator, and education reformist. He is the founding director of Sigmol and very popularly known for building ice stupas in Ladakh. For today's conversation, we will speak on climate change, which is one of the biggest concern in the world. Tash Dile Sunam Wongchula and Jule, it's a pleasure having you here with us today. Thank you so much for taking out your time to speak with Tibet TV. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Tashi Dele, to you and all the viewers of Tibet TV. Uh, Sunam Wangchula, speaking on the ongoing border tensions between India and Tibet-occupied China, with Chinese army's intrusion inside the Indian territory, we can see that there is a military buildup in the border region. And because of that, the shepherds who are raising goats in Ladakh are losing a lot of pastures. How is the increase in military in the borders affecting the environment? Good question. Uh, in several ways. Um, on the Indian side, I know that whenever we militarize uh, one of these highland pastures and, you know, uh, area where nomads roam, we disrupt their lives. Um, not only that, we disrupt the lives of uh, wild animals like um, the black-necked crane is uh, harmed a lot by uh, men and uh, animals like dogs that military often has. I'm sure it's happening at much bigger scales on the other side also, and I see it happening. It's uh, unfortunate, but because of this buildup, that is happening. And very, very importantly, in recent uh, researches, it has figured that a lot of our glaciers melt not only because of the global warming, but because of local pollution. For example, local emission of black carbon, soot, which comes out in, uh, you know, diesel-fueled vehicles that are now in thousands, trucks, tanks, and so on. Or the military camps that use fuel to heat themselves and to cook and so on. So much diesel smoke and the black carbon is uh, released which then ultimately goes and sits on the white uh, blanket of snow or glacier, what we call. And these glaciers no longer reflect the sun or less so and therefore melt faster. And that then results in smaller glaciers for the farmers and even worse, glacial lakes forming alongside global warming. So militarization of these sensitive environments is one of the saddest things on both sides. We have nomads in Tibet and also um, there are nomads in Ladakh as well. The Chinese authorities are taking all the possible measures to eliminate Tibetan nomads by blaming them for deteriorating the environment. So now, Wangchula, you have seen the nomadic lifestyle in Ladakh. Are their lifestyle affecting the environment? Well, I would have thought that nomads were one of the lightest treading people on the planet. They hardly, you know, do any harm. They move with their animals and their animals actually help fertilize flora in the highland pastures because of intervention of animals. Often you help plants grow better they are completely self-sufficient. They don't harm you. If you compare with people who urban dwellers in cities, they are angels on the planet. And if we disrupt their lives, they might end up coming to um, maybe Lhasa or Ngari or Leh and become one of us uh, who are like energy guzzlers and polluters. So this will be a very sad thing uh, for the... Uh, fragile environment of Tibet and uh, Ladakh. Uh, it's happening because of economic reasons, which is a very sad thing because all that is possible with pastures and yaks and animals like pashmina goat is very, very valuable for both humans and nature. And I think it is very sad if that is happening on the other side of the border. So you are saying that nomadic lifestyle is so much healthier for the environment as compared to the lifestyle of the people in the urban areas. 
Definitely, definitely. I mean, their CO2 emission per capita would be negligible, negligible uh, compared to what we do in cities. Uh, to disrupt this kind of lifestyle would be uh, a crime. I hope this is not true because decades ago I used to respect uh, how Tibet was managing its uh, nomads in the Changtang uh, area, uh, whereas in Ladakh they were uprooting and coming to the cities. Now, if the army is involved in this uh, desettling them, that would be very unfortunate. So, Sunam Wongchila, we all know that Tibet is the water tower of Asia as it has the largest number of glaciers. Uh, Tibet provides a source of water to most of its neighboring countries. In this river in Ladakh flows from Tibet to Ladakh. Uh, with so many dams being built on the rivers in Tibet, how is it affecting the availability of water in Ladakh? Well, yes, Tibet and the adjoining area is like the third pole, sometimes we say. More water is stored here than anywhere else after the first uh, north and the south poles. So it would be very unfortunate. I'm not yet aware of it happening for real, but I do believe that the world as a community should have a decision over such things, you know, just because you are upstream should not mean that you do anything with the water. Even in our villages, there's so much of civility that the houses that are upstream do not take all the water for themselves. Even our villages have an age-old system of water distribution. I'm sure China, if it wants to be seen as a leading nation and not as a rogue nation, would respect others and not just grab it all for themselves. I really want to believe that uh, they would have that sensibility. And if not, then the global community as a whole should have some say over such things. You know, you can't run the world by might is right. Yeah? And a nation that looks forward to being a leader in the world will definitely not instill trust and uh, faith if they behave like this. So I want to believe that they'll um, realize these and respect those downstream. Speaking about the availability of water in Ladakh, it just reminded me about the ice stupas that you have built in Ladakh. I'm really awed by your innovation in building these baby glaciers, which provides water to Ladakh when needed the most. I'm really impressed by the fact that it does not require fossil fuels, but is entirely run by solar energy, turning the desert into a green land. Anyway, uh, Tibetan spiritual leader, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who actually became the first Nobel laureate uh, to be recognized for his motivation and concern towards global environmental problems, uh, said that human beings are responsible for the current climate crisis. How can each individual participate into putting an end to this critical issue, Sunam Wangchula? Yeah, first of all, uh, the ice stupas of Ladakh, um, I want to clarify two things. Um, A, that it is not just my invention. I have taken inspiration from traditions that have been in this part of the world for hundreds of years. I've grown up as a child hearing stories about how our ancestors would uh, graft or build glaciers though the science was not easy to understand. Much later, one of our senior engineers, Abba Norfelle, was doing something in this direction. All these inspired me to bring more science and make it more uh, feasible and convenient for people. So ice stupas are a, um, an adaptation of something that already existed for a long time. Secondly, I also don't believe that this is the solution for our melting glaciers. You know, these are small fixes, have great potential for specific valleys and places where it is doable. But still, I don't think this is the answer to our question. And that brings us to what you said about His Holiness statement. Yeah, so uh, Ladakh and mountain regions cannot fix these things. We have to look at how every individual around the globe lives. Our solution is more in Mumbai, New Delhi, New York, Paris, Beijing, 
than in lay or you know the villages here because it is the lifestyle of the people in these metropolitan cities that is responsible for all the emission and all the heating up of the climate and our glaciers melting so for a more lasting answer we really have to take ownership and responsibility about our behavior on this planet we cannot have a party like thing as we used to before corona you know as if there is no tomorrow we we'll live uh, over consume have uh, you know 10 pairs of shoes and five cars and three houses we'll have to live simpler Yes, no, Wangchula, like you said, it's very true that just by building ice stupas, even though it's uh, providing a very big help, it is still not sufficient. Everyone should take individual responsibility and take the steps that you just mentioned. Also, you have uh, recently launched the I Live Simply campaign where you don't give money but pledges. Uh, can you tell us something about this? Well, seeing how the world is going, the planet is going, environmentally i feel all our education system should be about healing the planet rather than plundering the planet as 300 years ago people thought was the way and made curriculums about that it should change now if you put the same things the same horrible things will come out so we have to change the input into the system into the minds of the children while that happens we thought in ladakh that we should try and educate people in a fun way people of the big cities of the world because we can't live happily here until people in the big cities change their behavior so last year on mahatma gandhi's birth anniversary we launched a campaign a global campaign called the i live simply movement and uh, like mahatma gandhi said um, live simply so others may simply live so we from the mountains of ladakh to the coastal areas which are drowning due to climate change want to say that if you live simply in the big cities we in the mountains and coastal areas may simply live so i live simply is designed as a fun thing for young people to associate it is designed as a crowdfunding campaign on www.ilivesimply.org i suggest people go and check it for themselves where you can contribute like in a crowdfunding campaign you can contribute but not money because the planet does not need your money what it needs is your behavior change so around new year for example we make new year resolutions so how about making pledges for the planet so if you pledge you will not use car as much as possible and take the bicycle you're actually contributing a thousand dollars worth over a year so the site translates it into dollars or if you say i will not fly i'll take the train that could be a big contribution i'll plant trees on my birthday or on various occasions that becomes a big contribution which can be equated into money so we feel how much we have contributed or if you say i'll go vegetarian or partly vegetarian we know how that helps the environment so this site converts your lifestyle change pledge into monetary um, equivalent and counts how much globally people are doing already some 13 uh, million dollars have been raised virtual green dollars these are not um, the dollars that are not much use for the planet these are dollars that actually help the planet heal so i very much urge all your viewers to go see this campaign and share it in the friends around the world so that uh, a movement like this comes from the people of the mountains who as an sos call rather than bragging about ice stupas as an sos appeal urge the people of the world to please change your lifestyles so we may simply live that's the idea of the i live simply movement i live simply movement is a wonderful campaign sonam wangchula i really liked the idea and 
I would also like to urge to all our viewers to go into this site and know more about the campaign. Thank you so much, Sonam Wangchula, for being with us. It was a pleasure doing this conversation with you. Thank you for coming to our show. Thank you and thank you, everyone. We look forward to working together as a global community and overcome all challenges. We shall overcome. Thank you. Tashidele. Sure, Sonam Wangchula. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode of In Conversation with Pet TV.